What's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another gameplay video. Today we have myself in the bottom of the screen playing Red Bulma with a lot of new draft box six cards. On the top of the screen we have Danny Wynn playing Garlic Jr. with the new expansion garlic. So I talked a little bit about earlier this week how it makes the deck a lot stronger uh, just because you're able to play a turn faster. So we're going to kind of see these two newer-ish style decks going at it. So it looks like Danny is going first with a Machio Star turn one. That's exactly what you want. You want either a Gasu, which searches your Machio Star or Machio itself. And then he gets into the turn one blocker, which is perfect for what he wants to do. If I was a little bit more of an aggressive deck, that blocker would give him a lot of value. Unfortunately, I'm not so aggressive. And I missed my main turn one play, which we'll see later on in the video. I will eventually play that card because this game does go on pretty long. In real time, it goes for about 40 minutes. Uh, I think I shortened it down to about 18, 19 minutes or so. But uh, yeah, so he's going to swing out here with the Yamcha and his leader. Now he gets to Servant that away. And if he has the Garlic, play it. Yep, there's that right there. So now he gets to go into his 5 drop on turn 2, which is just ridiculously strong. That's the thing about Garlic. Like, this play is is crazy strong, but it's so dependent on, on, its, on its curve. Like, there are a decent amount of games where Danny misses his curve. He either misses Machio on 1, he doesn't draw into the Expansion Garlic by turn 2, or, or the 5 drop, depending on what he's missing there. Um, so the consistency is a little bit, um, hurt, I guess you could say, but here he's off to a really, really good start. So I'm charging to turn two here. Now there's the Mai that I wish I had on turn one. So in this deck, uh, this is the silver bullet Mai that pretty much just dumps on blue decks, right? But in the, in Bulma, Mai is a one drop barrier blocker her the rest of her text is pretty much irrelevant like that's one of the things that makes her insane in bulma uh i really think bulma is probably the best generic mono red leader when you look at like yamcha reboot hit when you talk about red green i think there's definitely some more merit to vegeta baby and reboot hit but i think when you're looking at mono red uh in this type of card pool i think i think bulma is probably the best leader because there are so many good cards you can play as blockers like the videl man for instance negate and attack block um for one energy and one card essentially there's just so many good cards like that that make bulma incredibly good plus when you get to your backside you start drawing two cards per turn the awaken on tap two is an amazing effect that not every red leader has so that's really strong there so i am going to be able to negate the garlic which is nice negate that critical and i am going to be able to stop multiple attacks here because of all the different blockers that we have if he goes with the leader swing i can use the my although I'm already at four life, so actually he's rushing me down pretty hard. So he's grabbing the Yamcha off of the garlic effect. We'll block that here, even though he does have two more swings, which are pretty big compared to my 5k leader. So the fact that he went first and the fact that he had like this just ridiculous opening is uh is definitely pretty rough for us here. So 15 to 5, he's already awakened. I, I can't do much about that. No super combos in hand makes that really tough. I could awaken, uh, but I just choose not to. I I think I'll take my chances at 2 life here. And uh, spoiler alert, I, I stay at 2 life in this game for, for a very, very long time, which is pretty funny. So uh, the turn 3, Jiren plus awaken definitely helps out here. So we're going to 4 markers right away, just immediately using the plus 1. We're going to swing into the blocker. I don't want to give him a bunch of life yet. I don't really want to swing into his battle cards. I do have removal for the battle cards later on. And I don't actually mind if he starts building up a big board. Because I'm pretty sure I can survive another turn or two. And once he commits more to the board, I'll just use the Vegeta Exploding Weakness in my hand to, to clean it up. That's one of the big weaknesses of Garlic. is a card like Exploding Weakness and a card like uh, Concentrated Destruction. Which are both pretty much tied to red. So he does use the energy field there, but he doesn't have enough demon clans on the field to make it free. So just a regular negate in that sense. We're going another 20k double strike at his unison. He'll take two markers there. And with that, I will say go with two energy open. No topo in hand, which, which would be pretty nice. Although he is at four open energy, so he could cooler me. So maybe topo actually wouldn't be ideal, but I do have Videl into block, right? So I can negate with that and then immediately block with it, which is really, really nice. So I negate the Yamcha swing here. He goes into the Vinegar swing. We'll use the Wolf Fang and just kill it. Minus 15. Really easy right there. Very nice. Leader into the leader. Looks like we'll block. And then you, you definitely want to do that 
preemptively. I mean, it's also that I'm a very low life, so obviously I'm going to block it. But um, since you're playing against yellow, they have a plethora of ways that they can uh, tap your non-barrier cards. So you want to make sure you use that blocker pretty early to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm definitely feeling okay about his big garlic because I have a very easy way to remove it. I can just uh, use Wolf Fang Fist when he swings with it. And then I can use the minus three of Jiren. So I'm going to go counterplay here, actually. So he's going to play Gossiu off of his Overlord effect. Uh, a lot of those two drop garlics, not the not the possessed guys, but the guys that actually hang out with garlic and his little crew there. They, uh, they are allowed to be played for one energy when you use Overlord, kind of like the Garlic Jr. expansion itself. So he does that. And in window two, I use Yamcha minus the Gossiu and the garlic. So now on any swing that he does, I get to use the minus three of Jiren. Which I should have just used it right there. That was a misplay on my part by not using it. So he's going to cooler my Wolf Fang. I was just going to Wolf Fang the 5-drop garlic because it's already at 15k. And he decides to cooler there. But I still have the Jiren on board to uh, to deal with it. So actually, I forced him to use a cooler, which probably was like a misplay on my part. I definitely should have just minus 3 when he swung into my Yamcha. That was definitely a misplay. But it's still working out pretty okay here. He did get some draw that I wish he didn't get. But he actually... Danny actually kind of missequenced here by not using the effect of the garlic to bring back that Yamcha. He put that Yamcha into the corner of his field because like it was just assumed he was going to bring it back off of the five drop garlic's effect. The five drop garlic lets you play a servant from the bottom uh, onto your field. So he definitely missequenced that. So a little bit of a trade of, of misplays there. So here we go. Back to our turn. We're going Jiren's double strike into the unison. Make sure he can't use any counter plays on us. He really doesn't have energy to negate this and nothing to block it. So I'm pretty sure it's just going to be going in. He's going to use the leader effect to play Roshi. Okay. So essentially Roshi is going to cycle him out of card because Roshi plays, replaces itself. This is off the leader auto, by the way. So Yoshi play, uh, Roshi, not Yoshi, plays, replaces itself. And then next turn he can overlord it. But I am going to play Exploding Weakness to basically clear his entire board. And that gives me the last tech I need to clear his unison markers. And we're going to pass turn. So going into Danny's turn, 5 energy. Uh, he doesn't have a board, which is really, really nice. But most times against Garlic Jr., you got to be wary of Cell Zeno, Especially on that 5 energy, they'll play it, rip 3 cards out of your hand. But here, especially with red, and, and green can probably do this to a pretty good degree as well. I'm able to keep his board very clear. But the thing that green can't do is green can't really remove his um, his five drop garlic effectively. So the fact that I can do that uh, means I'm, I guess you could say I'm extra safe from garlic junior. Or I guess from Salzino. So I just checked my drop area. I have nine cards. I'm checking the count to make sure I can play smoke dragon. So I'm three cards off, which is one of the reasons I shotgun violent rays there. Uh, a lot of his deck is 20k or higher with servant. So you have like this Yamcha, for instance. And you have Garlic Jr. So he's trying to swing with it right now, but then I have to remind him, hey, listen, I, I played Violent Rays. I called battle cards. So he's just basically playing a two-drop blocker, which is definitely not bad at all, especially 20k blocker. But yeah, that's why I kind of shotgun the Violent Rays so that I can get more cards in my drop area. And also, like I know his deck is it has a lot of those bigger attackers, right? So kind of just makes sense to do it there. So he's cycling it out with Servant, and he's playing the Garlic Expansion off that. So in window two, and again, that's one of the more powerful things about the Yamcha counterplay is that specifically in window two, you can hit the thing being played, but uh, if it's like a hard cast or like a window one usage, you can't you, you can't hit the card being played with Yamcha, which makes it a little bit weird. But uh, against things that use skills to play battle cards, Yamcha is definitely very, very solid. Uh, likewise, if Yamcha didn't even work here, I could actually just minus 10 with Jiren. But I do want to get the battle card into play. It gives me additional blocker. Again, I'm, I'm very low life. I've been at two life for like this entire game. So uh, getting the blocker into play, definitely solid. But Danny's still at six though. So I have a lot of life to chip through. He should not be feeling very scared. Uh, I'm sitting on this crown of retribution in my hand that I probably should have just charged instead of that Piccolo because he has only one open energy up. Although I'm hoping that next turn I'm able to use Broly Crown. Like I'm, I'm anticipating this game to go for a few more turns here. So Yamcha goes in. He's playing the vinegar off of the leader effect. The leader uh, then a uh, vinegar, sorry, then, then lets him get a servant or a demon clan off the top five and play it. So if he hits like a 
a Chi-Chi here, for instance, he can tap my unison, which is quite strong. But I'm using the Jiren to minus 10 the vinegar. Just in case he like misses off the vinegar or anything like that, I have a guaranteed minus 10 that my leader can swing at. So leader swinging 10k into 5k. And yeah, that, that Chi-Chi tap in my unison is a is definitely a very big pain. I probably should have swung with Jiren first, but that's okay. So he's gonna let the vinegar go. I'm gonna free play the Piccolo. We'll go in at his life, 20k double strike. Trying to force him down to three. Just, try, just trying to put as much pressure on as I can. A five to three shot uh, for as long as Dragon Ball has been a game has generally always been good. So not much to complain there about that. Playing Piccolo, five seconds to eradication. This card is the bread and butter of the deck. It's essentially the Obuni of the deck. It might not be as powerful as Obuni, although I'll, I'll tell you that Obuni is not incredible this format. But uh, yeah, so when he swings, he can't be blocked, which is amazing, especially in the mirror match or even like against like Red Broly, for instance, when they play Ba, just random stuff like that. Send Shenron, of course. And when I swing with it, I get to put a marker on Jiren. So you'll see like that Bardock strategic mind in my in my energy. That's a, that's a tech card I got to shout out James for, one of my friends. That uh, he gave me the tech to, to just basically give Jiren more markers. So Jiren's best ability is the minus three to kill battle cards. So playing that guy, he's a Saiyan, so he becomes a 20k blocker when you play him. He has deflect as well, and he gives your Jiren plus three. So it's basically another guaranteed ulti, uh, if you will. So it looks like he's swinging leader. I'm going with Videl. And Videl is another amazing card in the deck. Just negate for one and then block for the same card. One card basically stopping two attacks for one energy. It's uh, it's really, really good. Looks like he's an Overlord here. And now we're checking to see if he has another Garlic to play. But I do have the Jiren to give it minus 10, which is nice. So he's hard casting Garlic. Wow, yeah, this is interesting. So, I mean, he can grab the server and he just puts it to the bottom of the deck, which is definitely not bad. The, uh, that's going to tap my Videl, which does hurt a bit, but I got to use the Jiren minus 10 on Garlic. So if he swings with a 5 drop of Garlic, it's automatically dead. So his best move here is to probably not attack in general, which then actually kind of makes playing the Chi Chi irrelevant, although he's, he's technically one card closer to, um, to Energy Field. Although he, I guess he can get there, yeah. So if I attack... He can play a Demon Clan, and then he can use Energy Field. But I do have the Vegeta, which pretty much clears his board, except for his his Garlic. Although I do have uh, probably other methods of getting rid of it at this point. So we're playing a Mai, drawing one. Yeah, we pretty much committed to not playing the Smoke Dragon here, which is perfectly fine. At this point, I'm starting to turn the advantage of the game. Not so much in card advantage. Like, I do have a really wide board compared to his. Uh, our hand size. Actually, I have more cards in hand than him as well. But he has a lot of life to pick up, which is uh, something to consider. Like, none of my stuff really has crit. So, I'm going to be giving him cards off of his life. And he, he'll be able to make up some of that advantage. And that chi was just supposed to be tapped because he brought it out off the leader effect. So, we just corrected that. And I'm playing Burly Crown here just to have an additional blocker. Um, the only card in my hand that needs energy is Smoke Dragon right now. So I'll leave one up for Smoke Dragon to be a potential 10k combo if I need it. But right now we have four blockers. Uh, some of which he can tap, but I don't think he can tap a ton of them at once. He can maybe tap like two of them at, uh, on this turn, possibly. We'll see what he ends up doing with it. So it's like we're blocking the leader swing with Broly Crown. And again, it's just so funny that uh, I've been able to stay at two life this entire time. Very cool stuff. Looks like we're probably yelling at each other over something here because this is a... Uh... This battle's taking a while. Oh, Danny's actually... I remember Danny's debating whether or not he wants to combo. So he's going to Zamasu super combo, tap down one of my blockers, and he's going to Bergamo to tap down two more of my blockers. Okay, yeah. So this is a play he was debating about doing. He ends up doing it. Uh, obviously, little does he know I had the Videl in my hand, but at this point, I'm actually pretty scared to sell Zeno because he's got seven on the board already. Um, he could potentially get five more onto the field. I think it would actually be a little bit 
convoluted for him to have to do it. But I'm just thinking to myself at this point in the game, and it's been going on for so long. I'm just thinking, is there any way you can get Selzino? I really hope not. I saved the minus 10 of my Jiren here. I don't quite use it yet, just in case uh, maybe he plays like a, an expansion garlic somehow or something along those lines. We just negate the Bergamo swing. So we have the blocker available. He plays the baby unison, so now I pretty much know I'm safe from Selzino. He definitely needs more than just one energy at this point to get into Selzino. So I will minus 10 the baby here once he plays it. Although it is a 20k. Because he has two yellow battle cards in rest mode. But that's okay. If he attacks with my leader, all I have to do is pitch 5k or just block. So we're blocking with Videl here. That's got us at 11 cards in draw. Just one card off of Smoke Dragon. Probably again talking about something. This game's been going on for so long. Looks like Danny is going to untap his unison with the plus one and pass to me. Definitely safe to skip charge here. We're finally drawing our super combos. Super late, but definitely better late than never. This is probably going to be the turn we're going to want to drop the Smoke Dragon. Now, I'm a little afraid here of Nimbus because I haven't seen a Nimbus yet. And uh, it's possible he's playing like two copies, maybe. It's also possible he's not playing it and just trying to solely rely on Energy Field. Uh, but I do go in with the Unison first here. Maybe I should have went in with the Battle Card. But uh, regardless, he is going to block with the Baby Unison, it looks like. Okay, it looks like he changed his mind to block with the Yamcha, and then he uses Leader Effect to play a Yamcha, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting because it comes in rest mode. I'm not quite sure why he did that, but regardless, uh, I play Smoke here. This is probably a misplay. Uh, I probably could have swung with a Battle Card and gotten him to, to, take, to take a life here, so I could have gotten the full Rip 4 out of his hand, but the game, again, had been going on for so long. This is like 35 minute mark here, so I'm just like, let's put it to an end, right? Let's just put it to an end. I don't even kill him this turn. I just rip his hand and take care of his board here. I do what I can to just uh, take care of his unison. Let him play with pretty much zero cards. And this one kind of hurts because I got a I got a combo card here to deal with that. Maybe I should have swung into the Bergamo and um, comboed a super combo. Because I guess, yeah, maybe that would have been okay. But this is still fine either way. He's got very few cards. I don't think he has a single answer in his deck to Smoke Dragon. So we'll just block the rest of what we can block. I'm still at two life. We just blocked the Bergamo swing. Leader swing, we super combo out of it. Very nice. He's just gonna hard cast Poutine. Uh, something he definitely wishes he saw earlier that actually been very, very good against my Videl negates, but usually yellow players only play like two copies of it because it's, a, it's an off-color card and it can clunk. Usually only having one way to resolve it with your Zamasa Super Combo is not super consistent, so it's a great tech card, but it's not, uh, not the most consistent thing you can play. So I'm gonna go Vegeta here and just minus three the Topo uh, on the Poutine, get the guy ignoring barrier. Basically cause him to lose 5k. He's a three life here. I'm gonna make him take as much damage as possible and just wipe his hand with smoke and go in double strike. That's the game right there, guys. So I pretty much forced him to have zero cards in hand. That was the game. Let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. If you wanna see either of the decks, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Thanks and I'll see you guys next time.